All right, guys. Um, do millennials get a raw deal? Um, see, the thing is, I think it's not just millennials. I think there's been a very strange development through the millennials' childhoods, which I would say has probably got a lot to do with um, the changes of parents that were kids in the 80s, but also there's a bit of a weird hippie movement that was sort of recurring as well, because I used to see it a lot in social housing. Because um, you would get, like, say, social workers that have a case that they're working with. Um, they're very aggressive. They're very... Um, their view is their only view. Um, if you confronted them about something, for example, say their tenant had a bit of a fit and smashed all the windows in their house, which I've had before, um, their view was, well, this person's a vulnerable person. And you sort of say, yeah, but we've got another 300 properties we're working on. They're not a priority for me because they actually did the damage themselves and they're in the same queue as everybody else. Now, don't get me wrong, if somebody had vandalized their property, and um, I'd put that as a priority because it wasn't them. But these people often um, do a lot of damage themselves and then just expect to be prioritized because their social worker, the only person they care about is themselves and the people they're dealing with. And a lot of the problems I think come from that environment because you find a lot of the people that do it started off uh, in education, studied to become a social worker and then become somebody's caseworker with no real world experience and no nothing, no context, no um, understanding of the other, the, you know, what goes on in the real world. Um, and don't get me wrong, I know it's a very stressful and difficult job, but at the same time, I do think that's where a lot of these problems occur. And it's often with the mindset that there are, their opinion is often more important than fact. And when you start looking at how the similar mindsets fit into different bits of society, everybody's a winner, everybody gets a certificate, everybody gets a badge, everybody gets a uh, gets gets to be um, a winner. There are no losers, no second place. There's no. This is where a lot of this has come from, um, because the point is, it's not reality. But you try and confront one of these people about the fact that it's actually damaging to society. They'll probably walk away, shout you down. Um, they will not listen to how this is affecting society. And if you look into different parts of society and uh, how people are taught this and educated in that direction, no wonder we have generations of people that are more likely to be depressed, more likely to be unhappy with things, more happy, un, unhappy with life in general, because they're better educated. Um, at the same time, they've been groomed in a, in a very fake way. Um, because let's face it, you go for your first job, you might not get it. They don't sit there and go, we're employing everybody, because that's how the world works. It's the better candidate that wins. That's reality. And pretty much through life, that is reality. Not everything is on the silver platter. That's, you know, it's, I can't even call it a socialist way, because I don't think, uh, you know, the sacrifice of all for the better, you know, the sacrifice of one for the better of all is very socialist. But at the same time, even in that context, I don't think it fully fits because you're getting a lot of individuals that struggle to find their place in society. You know, they're expecting to be um, successful, wealthy, um, having a Instagram lifestyle because that's what they're being pushed. Context is missing context of the fact that you can fail and you will in life often fail because that's life 
you know, you're probably going to have as many downs as you are up. It's how you ride it is ma that matters. But when you remove that, who's teaching somebody to get back up? When they fail or fall, who's teaching them to get back up? So, you know, I look at it from that perspective because saying, well, the, you know, millennials are more demanding in the workplace and whatever. It's because they've been told they're entitled to it all. And it's my generation and other generations that have encouraged it. You know, life isn't fair. It never will be. Um, there will always be somebody doing better than you. There will be somebody um, getting ahead for various reasons. And in today's society, it's even more compl complicated because they throw in BLM, they throw in woke, they throw in uh, diversity. Uh, see, I can't say diversity and equality. I've mentioned this before because they can't fit in the same sentence. If you give somebody a job because of their background or whatever over somebody that may actually be better qualified, better skilled, more experienced, it's no longer equal. Um, I was brought up in a, a military background. My, my father was in the army. I went to schools that were more military biased in the sense of we, we, if you wanted to succeed, you work hard at it. If you want to be on the football team, you have to turn up for practice. If you want to be the best at something, you have to work for it. And part of it is also recognizing you don't win everything. You know, that's why being a good loser is also just as important as being a good winner. Because it's recognizing, you know, I'm not a long distance runner. I used to be good at short distance and hurdles. But there's no way I could outrun some of my friends that were short, uh, sorry, tall and skinny, because they could run far, far further than me. I could outrun them on the, the short distance, but when it comes to long distance, I didn't have the stamina to keep that up, but I, I recognize where I fit in. And that's one of the key things is recognizing that there is a place for everybody in society. Not everybody has to be driving a Lamborghini. Not everybody has a Instagram lifestyle because a lot of those people with Instagram lifestyle, uh, lifestyles, it's fake. And often it's spun on advertising in the sense of a false lifestyle to generate uh, revenue from advertising. It's a snake eating itself. Um, and I do find in today's society, we have allowed too much advertising elements to dictate society. Because let's face it, when you look at branding and how things are focused, and even when you look at how YouTube's changed over the years to suit an agenda. Uh, it's advertisers. It's played things down. You look at the news, play things down. Follow an agenda. You don't have um, more complicated news stories. They're all about Kardashians, or if it's a war conflict, it's good and bad. There's, there's no bit in the middle, which is the gray. And the grey elements are often where you find the common sense, a bit of truth, a lot more honesty, and an understanding of what really is going on. Um, but that's all removed. Context. Um, which gets on to a more important bit, and I'll cover it in another video, is the lack of empathy out there. Empathy is in short supply. And a lot of this stuff drives it. You know, when you, you're looking at, you know, I post a lot of food stuff because I love food, but there's not a lot of stuff out there that's driving empathy. Even when you see videos of people giving stuff to homeless people, they're doing it for the wrong reasons. You know, and it, this is one of the problems of having real empathy is it's often not something you advertise because you just do it. You know, you'll, you'll help somebody because they need help. You'll understand somebody's issues because you listen to them it's not for advertising and general promotion but the media has set things up that way which makes it much harder to have proper conversations um, and and promote it and I do think empathy is one of the key things that there needs to be more of out there um, a lot of businesses lack it severely 
um, they do not understand staff in many companies. They do not understand people. That's not just the say as it is. It's not just staff, it's people. They become so disconnected from reality and following a very robotic line. They removed people from the equation and just assume dictatorship fixes everything. Um, which part and parcel is where you've got the great resignation that's come in. That's where they think this stuff comes from. It's not just magically appears. It's been driven over a period of time. This is what I'm saying. A lot of this goes back to the way people have been brought up. You know, and it's I you know I feel sorry for kids from that are millennials or whatever because a lot of the stuff is to set them up to fail. It's to say you're going to be a great achiever. You're always going to win. You're always going to be the best. You're going to be. You'll get a certificate anyway. All this sort of stuff, and then they get the first job interview. But then they realise that instead of learning to be content and and um, drop into things that are, I'd say, more joy. See, happiness is a pursuit. The pursuit of happiness can often be difficult. Because not, you can't be happy all the time, but you can have joyous moments, you can be happy, you can be content, you can have experiences that you like, all that sort of stuff. Um, but if you're programming people to be above and beyond, what have they got to fall back on? And I sort of say that out there, you know, in this video, because I do think it's important to reinforce with your own kids and people that. Um, are of these younger generations that are missing some of the key things that we may have been brought up with um, to reinforce and say it's okay it's alright to make a mistake nobody died hopefully um, but in all honesty you've got to make mistakes you've got to learn from it you've got to get experience you've got to do things repeatedly to get better at it life should never be on a silver platter um, because what does that achieve? Even if you did, it's still empty because there's no achievement there. Working hard at something and getting ahead because of that, that's far more important, far more worthwhile. That's why, you know, I don't do it so much in the UK because I don't see as many people in the UK, but when I'm out in Asia, I'll speak to the security guards and, um, you know, just general people around working in shops and stuff um, because everybody's a human being everybody's got their own issues and you know it's just nice to just say how's your day going you know because not in a patronizing uh, sales way because that's their job <laughs> but literally just to take a little bit of interest now and again just say how's your day going and it's those little bits that make somebody's day because I bet nobody else asked them and from networking as well, you know, if you're looking at this from a business perspective, you want to meet new people, nothing better than just asking people how they're doing. You know, because you never know who you meet, you never know, you know, if you're sat in an airport lounge, you're sat in a uh, restaurant sometimes, you know, a cafe or something, you never know who you're sat next to. And sometimes just asking how some of these days go in, you know, just making general conversation can be very, very useful. But on top of that, I think it's a very positive way without being, we're all positive here, um, but actually doing it in a genuine way. I think that's important. And I think it's important that younger generations recognize it's okay to not become a millionaire tomorrow. It's okay to just go through life and be content with something. You know, um, for me, I, I could never do the um, working at the same place for 20 years because as soon as I start thinking about it I dread it and that's that's why I, I couldn't stay in that environment um, but I chop and change I do you know like at the moment I'm looking at Python um, starting to do a bit more out of my own comfort zones because I've got very bored I suppose because I've been doing the same thing for too long, um, but also I don't want to be in the same space for the next 20 years. I want to be doing something else. Uh, same as I want to actually start writing, because I do enjoy writing, but with writing, you've got to 
I've got to lock myself away and just do it. Um, but there is more to life out there. But it's also good to play it forward and also recognize that some of this stuff that is going wrong, you can help others with. You know, like I say, you know, people are going, oh, the kids are unruly, blah, blah. Why is it? What's causing it? When I look at the sports facilities and how they've sort of declined in the UK, you've got to pay for so much that when I was a kid, it was free. I used to just get a football and go across the field. I couldn't tell you where the, the nearest football field is that I can just go and play. You know, now, when I was a kid, there was loads. I used to just get football, go over there, and you'd meet a load of people you may never met before, and then you're meeting up every Saturday or whatever. What's happened to those spaces? Sold off. A lot of the areas just sold off, um, and now housing estates, etc. So recognize that you had a lot more when you were a kid. That's what, you know, the mentality was different. You know, you may have had some difficult parents or whatever, but you may find that they actually put you in good stead. You know, I never had that positive feedback from my parents about the fact that I was on the rugby team, the football team, the basketball team, the hurdles, the 100 meters, etc. Never had any positive feedback didn't hurt me though because I liked liked the sports but if it was everyone got a gold star in it, what's the point what's the point of being the best it made no difference you're devaluing everything um, it's the crab mentality it's quite a common phrase in the Philippines crab mentality it's when you have a bucket and there's a crab about to climb over the top and it's pulled down by the other crabs. That's what I see that as. Instead of seeing that somebody's excelling and being an Olympian or whatever and being the best of the best, and you know, somebody to look up to, let's drag him down to our level. Let's drag everybody down to our level. So it doesn't matter what you're good at, everybody's at the same level. It's just wrong. In life, you need something to aspire to. You know, when I was a kid, Daley Thompson, fantastic, absolute fantastic guy uh, for his sports. Um, they, I remember on the old ZX Spectral, Daley Thompson's decathlon. Um, you look back at some of the people out there, you know, you look at Magic Johnson, uh, Larry Bird, you know, on the basketball front. These people are legends. Pele on the football. Maradona, obviously, had these other issues off, off off the pitch but fantastic footballer and it's not always about sports you know you look at some of the musicians out there you listen to like the Eagles playing and their their, their musical abilities and Mark Knopfler on the guitar or whoever they don't get that by being average they get that by being good at practice you know you look at Nirvana where they started and where they ended up you know, unfortunately, the demise of Kurt Cobain was on a negative point, but at the same time, they become legends. And it, it's strange to understand how that come about, but at the same time, you know, on the on what happened. But if you look at their musical ability at the beginning and where they got to. That was a phenomenal change. That comes from practice. That's from being told you're rubbish and whatever and going back, practice, practice, practice and becoming better. It doesn't come from being average. Now, I'm not sending you guys up to say you're going to be average and never achieving. It's actually the opposite. Because my view is everyone has something they're good at. Don't get me wrong. It may not be aspiring and magical. It could be that you're, uh, I don't know, good at doing line marking <laughs> may not be the biggest sport out there <laughs> doing line marking for car parks um, but you can make a very um, successful living at it you know it, there's always something and a lot of it in life is about doing something you enjoy and 
getting to achieve where you want to be in life. You know, for, for me, having the ability to have a stable, stable income for the family at the same time as moving into um, more home working, remote working is more what I'm interested in. Um, because being around the family is more important. That's that's my main thing for me. It's watching the kids grow up. It's you know spending time with the family, traveling Europe, doing all that sort of stuff, heading back into Asia at some point. Um, it's about the experiences for me. And I know one of the problems you have today for a lot of people is they often don't people don't know what they want to achieve or do. And one of the things I will say is, in, in that instance, if you don't know what job you want to do, don't know what job you want to be in, start with what you want to achieve. You want to go to Asia for a year, okay? There's your objective. How are you going to get to it? And some people say working McDonald's, maybe a load of rubbish, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? If it's going to get you to there, and you're 16, 17, or whatever age you're in, um, you've now got direction. And the direction is what you need. Direction heads you in the, towards where you want to be. Because everything else, you're thinking about it. You're not doing it. And I'll do another video on that as well. Okay, thanks for watching.